Shifting focus now, India's real estate sector has been facing a massive slowdown for a long time now, several months in fact. A recent report has downgraded the outlook for the industry to pessimistic. Now this essentially means that there has been absolutely no improvement on ground and that there is a lot of uncertainty that the sector is facing. Lack of demand, unsold inventory, defaults by builders and developers are among the reasons for the slowdown in the sector. Now, adding to this, the overall uh, slowdown in the economy and with a slowdown uh, in access to funding has only made things worse. As a result of all of this, overall sentiment for the sector has taken a hit. That's the latest. This is a report, a sentiment index report by Knight Frank Ficke and the National Real Estate Development Council, which has uh, come up with this report uh, saying that uh, this, uh, the, the uncertainty looming in front of the real estate sector. Santosh Mehrotra, economist, joining me on the phone line. Mr. Mehrotra, as far as uh, you know, the real estate sector is concerned, we, of course, know how bad it was. Uh, perhaps the first sector to take a massive hit before we started seeing the ripple effect across sectors in the last few months as well. But uh, here, this report clearly points out that there is no uh, positive signs in sight and that sentiment has e taken an even bigger beating as far as the real estate sector is concerned. Well, this is consistent with what is happening in the economy as a whole. I think you've been hearing what has been happening to the automobile sector, the auto component sector, and uh, generally exports are not rising, uh, jobs are not growing, except in services. So the two sectors in the economy which are most uh, affected are manufacturing and construction. So what you are hearing now is, is consistent with all of this macroeconomic news. But it is, it's, uh, there's something more to this because generally consumer demand is low uh, because consumer confidence is low. And this is a, I mean, I would suggest that this is not merely a cyclical downturn because had it been a cyclical downturn, it would not have been going on for five or six years. It is actually a structural uh, downturn. No, I mean, let's of course remind ourselves that the, infrastructure and uh, construction companies have all been up to mi serious mischief, which is the reason why they are in trouble with the banks. So unless they come clean and, you know, uh, they are able to sell their assets, I don't see how infrastructure and construction uh, jobs or investment is going to rise. Yes, absolutely, Mr. Mehrotra. And here we're talking, like you pointed out, we're talking about the automobile sector, we're talking about real estate, and we're talking about infrastructure. Now, these are some of the biggest drivers as far as the economy is concerned. And uh, all of them are going through, uh, especially the auto sector as well as the real estate sector, are going through a massive uh, uh, downturn, a massive slowdown. Uh, so this is, of course, going to, you know, sort of exaggerate the situation otherwise as well. No, you are absolutely right. Um, it's not entirely clear what the government's plans are. And honestly, um, it has to be a multi-pronged attack. I think the banks have to be reformed unless the banks are reformed. There's no point in recapitalizing them. Uh, there have to be massive due diligence training that needs to happen within the public sector banks. I would even suggest that there is need for a development investment bank that we use, like we used to have at one point, IDBI, ICICI, you will recall, these were never, you know, retail banks. They were development banks. And many emerging market economies have been thinking seriously of reviving their old development banks because public sector banks, honestly, are in no position to, rev to revive uh, lending, which has been uh, uh, rising slightly recently, but certainly not in the infrastructure sector. Yes, absolutely. And of course, Mr. Mehrathra, the other part is that, uh, you know, amidst all of this, uh, even though the Reserve Bank has cut repo rates four times now by more than a percent, 1.1 percent uh, is the the, uh, the amount that which the repo rate has come down, that hasn't been passed on by banks. Banks are, for their own reasons, unable to pass on uh, the, you know, cut in the interest rates. And consumers are just not, to have no incentive to go, down, go out and buy. In fact, they're not even buying automobiles uh, and cars and two-wheelers, let alone houses. And it from the point of view of the banks, they have been suffering losses and they have accumulated NPAs. So they're not terribly willing to pass on the, the, uh, the reduction in the repo rate. 
uh, which is which is what I'm saying to say. It's, I'm trying to say that it's absolutely critical that the government will have to think about reduction of its own uh, majority shareholding in public sector banks. Uh, that will be one way of mobilizing resources for the banks. Otherwise, they will not be able to increase uh, lending over a period of time. There's no point in continuing to recapitalize the banks. That's like good, throwing good money after bad. Yes, absolutely, Mr. Mehrota. Thank you for joining us uh, with your perspective on this. Also, uh, joining me is uh, Mohan Guruswamy on the phone line, a senior economist. So thank you, Mr. Guruswamy, for joining us. Uh, of course, this report doesn't come as a surprise. We do know the kind of trouble that the real estate sector has been facing. But it's important uh, in the sense that important to highlight because just yesterday we saw the latest numbers for the auto sector, uh, one of the biggest drivers of the economy. Today, we are seeing that the sentiment of the real estate sector, as far as the sector is concerned, is just worsening. Uh, so, just important to highlight that these are two of the biggest drivers of the economy and both of them are undergoing such a massive slowdown. Absolutely. I entirely agree with <clears throat> Mr. Merotra that there's no point pouring more money into the banks. You've got to recapitalize it by selling shares to the public and letting go of control of banks, day-to-day -day control of banks, which is, where the, which is also the root of corruption and, and non-productive assets building up. And, you know, uh, I would like to see a day when the Department of Banking is, ba is, is, is shut down and this whole matter is looked after by the, by the RBI, as it does other banks. Now, uh, that is the only way to get finances flowing properly without this kind of nonstop political interference. And the uh, housing sector has been down not from 21 months, but for much before that. Look at the huge buildup of housing stock in the, in the big cities, Bombay and, and Delhi. Nothing has been moving for three years or four years. So I think the government needs to step in, make easy availability of, 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 of money for housing. And you know, housing loans are good loans because they're secured to an incentivized purchase of houses by offering good depreciation on housing. Why can't private individuals be given depreciation on, on houses like you give corporates and, and professionals, private individuals also should get some depreciation on houses they buy, maybe over, spread out over a 20, 25 year span. But houses do depreciate these days. It's only land which appreciates, buildings depreciate. So, you know, you've got to provide for all this. And this is the time to, to reform, to incentivize consumption, incentivize purchase with every house, employs dozens of unskilled labor consume steel, cement, and uh, uh, copper for fans and, you know, all kinds of manufactured goods. So this is your big stimulus. 55 million people are employed in, 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 in unskilled construction labor. Yes. This is a sector you've got to look at very seriously. Yes, absolutely. And unfortunately, this government seems to have no eyes for these things. All right, uh, Mr. Goswami, thank you so much for joining us with your quick uh, perspective on this uh, issue. This, of course, is the latest report on the real estate sector and the sort of highlighting the kind of slowdown, highlighting the extent of slowdown uh, and the extent that sentiment has been impacted as far as real estate is concerned.